Well, good morning, guys. Looks like I've got another repair job to do. This mirror is evidently broken off of its support. So that came off really easy. I just pried it off. It's just a press fit with two connectors here and here. And then we'll pull this rubber sound protector off and we're left with two bolts, one here and one there. There's a third nut here that we need to undo as well. And we'll undo the connector, um, take a pocket screwdriver and pry this little clip back. Now the device is held on by these three plastic prongs. We're going to squeeze them inward and then pull the whole mirror right off. So you can see I've got them pretty much apart, but I think it's the wiring that's holding it together. And so I'm going to take this little foam backing off so this white plastic thing slips off like so. It was hooked on in the back by these three prongs. And now I should be able to thread this wiring all the way out. Now that I've got the two pieces apart, I'm not seeing anything broken on the outside. But if you look in the inside, there's a big spring in there that seems to be loose. And so I need to get this further disassembled. Okay, now I want to show you how to get this mirror off. The mirror is held in place by these plastic tines. There are about 20 of them. And that's one of them right there and you slide a plastic tr screwdriver underneath and pry it back just I'm just twisting the screwdriver not too much because they'll break off and you work, work your way around there's a second one right there work your way around and pry them off and at the same time pull the mirror uh, back towards you okay I decided to take the mirror off to give myself a better view and I'll just give you a quick look at these mirrors. I don't like this Chev mirror setup, but it does hold the mirror fairly secure. They have these little plastic tabs with hooks on the sides, and those tabs grab on to this drum that holds the motor. And so what you do is, if the mirror is not broken, you want to be very careful not to break the mirror, but basically slide a screwdriver into one from one side and lift up these tabs one by one and uh, it takes about 15 minutes of sweat and frustration and then all of a sudden the whole mirror will come straight off. So look what I've done here. Um, it's funny how the easy things are hard and the hard things easy. Anyway, this electrical connector I broke that off of the tab on the mirror. That's my mirror heater. I don't really need it in my climate but I may be able to stick that back on somehow. Now let's take the motor off. Um, four T10 torque screws. Well, it took me a little while to figure out how this works, but now that I know how it works, I reckon we can fix it. Now, when I found this and took it apart, this little castle nut was sitting on top of the spring and it was all loose. And it took me a while to realize that this is, the system is designed so that the mirror can bang off. Now the way it works is like this. This sits on top of here like this with that male piece sticking through. The spring goes on top and then the castle nut is supposed to be squeezing the spring down. And uh, so the way the castle nut mounts on this, this is a metal piece, it slides on and, and grabs the metal piece. Now what happened is that when it was last knocked off, this metal piece was knocked off, allowing the um, mirror to float freely. Because it broke broke there, it didn't break any of the other plastic parts, and so I would call this excellent engineering, although somewhat complex. But in any case, what I need to do is I need to put this back together again, slide this castle nut back on, and then somehow compress it so that the castle nut grabs that centerpiece again. Let me show you a little bit more about how this works. You notice there are there's three bumps here, and then three corresponding notches in this end. And what happens is that the bumps are in the notches when it's in the right position. But when it slides out, you notice that it, the mirror rides up a little bit. And as it rides up, it compresses the spring. And so the spring tends to hold it in position. And so uh, just to allow that to move a little bit more easily, I'm going to put a little bit of silicone paste on this runner here just to allow it to glide a little bit more easily. Now for this next, I'm going to squeeze down the spring. I guess ideally I should remove all the plastic housings first and then just do it metal to metal, but I think I can get by with just squeezing the whole plastic down 
as a unit, uh, provided I make my uh, squeezing pressure to be well distributed. I'm going to take this little piece of pipe. This is inch and three eighths ID, inch and seven sixteenths OD, and it's about what three eighths of an inch large. And I'm going to press that down on the castle nut. right here and I'm going to use this big C-clamp to try and pull it all into place back off and see if it holds. And there, it looks like it's holding. Bring the camera closer so you can see it. So you can see there those little metal tanks hold up. I suppose I could try and weld those or even just do a little spot weld there. A little tack weld with the MIG welder. That might hold it a little better, but it'd be extra effort. Well, I wish I hadn't broken that little tying off. I've crazy glued it to the glass, but now I need to solder it to the electrical connection right here. So I've cleaned it off and I've got my soldering iron, so I'm going to do the solder connection here. Um, you could ask me why I'm doing this because um, my vehicle actually doesn't have access to um, the window heater function, so it's kind of wasted on this vehicle anyway, but I hate leaving something unfixed, so I'm just going to solder this. Well, I didn't bother to record the reinstallation, which is pretty straightforward. Say, uh, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please hit the like or subscribe button or leave a comment. I'd love to hear what others say. Thanks for watching.